Okay. Cool. Right. Well, hello, lovely listeners. Today, it gives me the great honor to be speaking with Amy Denson. Amy is a retired professional athlete who was diagnosed with her second autoimmune disorder in, back in 2016. She used to play professional basketball, which I just find incredible, um, all over the world, to then battling uh, professional fatigue uh, and also not recognizing herself anymore. And when she hit rock bottom, she felt a nudge that told her that there's more to life, there's a better way. And she instigated her athletic uh, inspired mindset and managed to start building herself back up again. And currently, Amy is certified as a nutritional therapy practitioner, which I've not heard of before, um, specializing in thyroid health and striving to support women in um, advocating for their own health and getting their energy back and basically feeling like themselves again. I think I could do with your help right now, Amy. <laughs> um, so welcome and thank you so much for being here. Of course. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Um, so Amy is based in Oregon and we've just been discussing how grey the weather is here and, yeah. and there. And we're just um, obviously back from the new year and from Christmas and, and chilling out time. But I, I think I feel even more tired than I did before Christmas. I think when you slow down, it's dead easy to get even lazier and even more slowing down. So <laughs> um, that, that wasn't great English. But anyway, so yeah. Amy, um, over to you, really. I would love to hear more about your, you know, what happened, how you became a you know, professional basketball player. Mm -hmm. um, are you really tall, by the way? Yeah, I'm about six one. Oh wow! Right. Um, okay. Yeah. I can't tell. I can't tell on I'm the big. Screen. I'm big and big and tall. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, thank you again for having me. Happy New Year, everyone. Um, I know a lot of our energy is is maybe down or recovering. I think you know that happens too. Just end of a year, and the last two years have been even more emotionally taxing to say the least. Yeah. And then I think there's also the. <laughs> I don't know if pressure is it, but you know, the new beginnings and new this and new that, which I, I freaking love. I love the newness of it. And then it's just, you know, a matter of taking action. So I think there's just a lot of energy stuff going around right now, but so my story, you know, I played, um, I played basketball growing up. I played a lot of sports. I, I just loved being active. I ended up getting a, a college scholarship to Arizona state university, um, and it was a pretty cool experience because we had a really young team. And so we got to basically play most of my career together, which is not, um, it doesn't happen as often. And we, you know, really, we made history there. We were the first team to make the, um, the sweet 16 in the NCAA tournament. Um, you know, just a lot of hard work. Uh, extremely, you know, physically taxing on the body, just from going from high school to college was a bit of a jump. Um, and, you know, I, I, as early as 12 years old, I, I have a paper downstairs that I wrote when I was 12 years old and said I was going to play professional basketball. Um, it, it was just, you know, I didn't know how, I didn't even know if that was an option for me besides the WNBA. Um, and so out of college, I, um, I got an agent and I started my journey. Um, my first job was in Puerto Rico and um, it's a very short season because we played three games a week. They didn't really like to practice much. They just wanted to play and party, which was like the coolest thing ever. Yeah. Um, the people there were just the most beautiful, wonderful people. And it helped me to really play free again and get my confidence back. Um, it was just a lot of pressure in college. And then, you know, I kind of fell back in love with the game a bit. Um, and so from there, I went on to play in Poland and Romania, three years in Australia and a year in Spain. And then I actually ended my career back at Puerto Rico, um, which was beautiful just because it was, it gave me my start and I just love, I love them so much. So I played overseas for almost eight years, um, had a really successful career. Can I just ask Kat? So yeah. Couple of questions. One is, you said at the age of twelve, you you wanted to be, you know, professional mm -hmm. basketball player. Where did that come from? Was it, you know, were you inspired by someone? Was there people in your family? Was it just because you were tall? You know, what was it? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, my 
my parents were always really encouraging. And I, um, I grew up in a really small town and I have to say that being so naive. So it was like, sometimes it's like my best and worst thing. So when my dad told me I could be anything I wanted, I was like, okay. I, you know, I took it to heart. Um, and I played a variety of things and basketball just always felt different for me. Um, yeah, I was tall, so that helped, but, um, my dad coached me my dad played basketball. My mom played basketball. Um, and it was just, it was just different. I, the way I felt on the court that the best way I could describe it is I have never felt more like myself. I just felt in the flow. I felt confident. I felt strong. Um, and for me, you know, a lot of times, you know, I was a really, really hard worker, so I wasn't overly athletic, but I, you know, my dad was just like, you just have to outwork everybody. And I was like, okay, well, I can do that. Um, and so I worked really, really hard to, you know, set myself up for, you know, positions of success as far as like game wise and performance wise. Um, and a lot of that has to do with mental and emotional, you know, kind of mindset and strength as you get older, because we're all pretty good once we get to the professional level. Um, but it was just, I just always knew in my heart, it was different. And it was also, I always knew in my heart that I was not meant to stay in that town. I was not meant to stay in that state. I always, I, I mean, even when I grew up playing, we'd all, I'd always play, like I had an apartment in the big city. I didn't know what that was. Um, I just wanted to explore. I've always had more of an independent kind of free spirit. And then once I was really, you know, for eight years, I was traveling on my own. I lived out of a suitcase. Um, I became even more so independent in that time because the only person I really had was myself. And so I, you know, was had a pretty strong, I guess, it, when I was younger intuition, I didn't know what that was. Mm -hmm. um, and then it just kind of got stronger as I, as I um, kind of grew up and continued to follow that kind of adventurous, you know, exploratory spirit kind of thing. And, and what does, because um, you said you played in various countries for various amounts of time. So mm -hmm. can you explain what that looks like? Because obviously, I mean, I'm, I know very little about basketball. Mm -hmm. Basketball is much more of an American sport than obviously a, yeah. a, a British one. Um, and we know the likes of Michael Jordan and people like that. So yeah. how did it work for you in terms of the, the, the teams? Was mm -hmm. it one team? Was it teams? Was it, you know? Yeah. So, um, so my agent would find a team that was looking for, um, they, we call imports. A lot of times it is American players. And usually they have two or three players on the team. They, they have caps sometimes is how many foreign players you can have on the team. Um, and so she did kind of all the legwork, um, initially, and then I would go. And so in Europe, the season's a bit longer. So it's kind of from fall to spring or summer. It's about eight months. Um, and then when I was in Australia, I played for two different leagues. And so I just got to play year round. So I played in the WNBL, which is kind of like the WNBA here. And then I played in, um, the league below Siebel league, which was more centralized to like, um, Melbourne. Um, and so I just played with one team. And, um, at that point I was kind of representing myself, but yeah. And, you know, women's basketball is pretty big overseas. Um, there's a lot of different levels of leagues. And so, um, I don't know if even a lot of young women that are playing know that, but there is a lot of opportunity overseas to, to go and make money and, and continue to do what you love. So, um, my agent kind of did the legwork initially, and then I ended up representing myself at the end of my career. Um, yeah. And then kind of once, you know, you're kind of in that athletic world, I guess for a bit, you start to make more connections and then you can kind of reach out to see you know, ideally where you'd like to play or live or go, you know, league wise, how, um, how strong the leagues are. So yeah, it's just kind of a, a an, our own little world, but, um, it is possible. So for any young women that are looking to play basketball or go pro, even, you know, other sports, I would just look into it. So, yeah, sounds mm -hmm. amazing. It sounds amazing that you've got to um, live in so many yeah. places. Um, so, <clears throat> so how long ago was it when you finished your career? Yep. So I retired when I was 30. So it was about seven years ago and, um, I retired. Um, and I always, for some reason, had it in my mind around 30 and I wanted to, I wanted to leave my career my way. I didn't want to drag it on. 
Um, I didn't want to not be performing. Um, I was really lucky. I never got, you know, any major injuries or anything like that. So at 30, I decided to call it. Um, I knew it was going to be hard. I did not know how, <laughs> how hard it was going to be. It was a lot harder than I ever thought. You know, I was grieving a life. I was grieving, uh, identity, you know, um, and then, so coming back here, I, to the States, I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to do. And, you know, thinking about the idea of, of settling down in one place was a little overwhelming since I'd been traveling for so long and kind of living in increments at a time. Um, and so, yeah, I kind of, it was really hard for me to get a job. Nobody, a lot of people didn't recognize that I had any experience between college and 30. Um, and so, yeah, it was just tough. I got my personal training certification, um, coached some high schools, kind of, I was just kind of floating around and it was a really, really tough time. Um, because I just felt like I went from this really once in a lifetime, high performing position opportunity to really not <laughs> getting any opportunity right? So not being validated for that, not even being looked at as like, I did anything. Um, it was very, very weird and hard. Yeah, yeah. I landed um, a couple of years later, I landed at coaching a, um, at a college. And I thought, well, this is it. Like, this is what I'm supposed to do. I have all of this playing experience. I have all of the, ex you know, I have the relatability of playing at a high, um, like a higher college, a D1. I have the relatability of what it takes to go pro. I was highly recruited when I was in high school. So I felt like I had a really good idea of, you know, really how to communicate and mentor to these young women. Um, I was there for three years and I loved the coaching aspect. And I think, I know that's something I really could have thrived in, but I was on the other side of that, my colleagues, um, we did not mesh well. And it really made me face a lot of, issues that I have as far as I tried to fix it. It couldn't be fixed. They did not like me. I didn't know why I tried to bend and mold and break to just try to fit in. It never happened. Um, and so I was constantly thinking, what did I do? Walking on eggshells. You know, I'd never really been, I've been in a position where people don't like me. A lot of times I, I it was a competitive position, right? Cause I would go overseas and be taking people's positions. So I kind of got it. That's fine. But I'd never been in a position where people just downright really didn't accept me, didn't like me. And it really bothered me. Um, and so I really had to face that. And after three years of trying to fit in, you know, I decided um, it just wasn't the place for me because at that time, at that point, I'd started to really physically start to have some symptoms, which I didn't know at the time, but that were stressed. So I, um, would start, I was kind of starting to gain weight, especially around my midsection. I couldn't sleep. I was starting to grind my teeth at night, which I'd never done. Um, just all of these little things that I thought was me. I thought that, well, okay. So how I deal with that was how I used to work out. So I would go and push, 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 you know, working out. And then I would try not to eat as much. And then I would, you know, come home and, and try to have a couple glasses of wine to wind down so I can go to sleep. And it was just this repetitive process with all of this kind of stress in between. And, um, as soon as I quit that job, uh, walking out of there was a huge stress relief for, for me. I didn't really have a plan B. And I want to note here that too, like it wasn't all, or most of it probably was any of those people. It was a lot of my own issues that I needed to deal with. I needed to figure out how to live my life, you know, with my personality, knowing my intentions. And if people don't like, or accept me, that's not my problem. And that was like a very in my face lesson that I think that a lot of times those lessons tend to show up in our lives over and over and over again. And I think a lot of times we're, we kind of were like, why, why does this keep happening? And I think it's because we don't address it. How did you recognize that? Because a lot of people will continue to make those mistakes time and time again. And it's, it's that classic different faces, different places, but same old shit. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, but it sounds like you had the self-awareness to know that, okay, so they didn't like mm -hmm. me. It was a horrible time, but I've got to look at myself for that. Yeah. And, and it's the same, you know, it's, it's a similar thing too. If you, um, with relationships, mm -hmm. if you're getting into the, into relationships and you see the same issues coming up over and over and over again, you know, the one common denominator is me. Yeah. Right. And so if I want things to be different, if I want to feel different, I need to kind of evaluate and adjust what's going on. And so I think too, a lot of times I call it like when I was in that situation, what I call it like kind of in my bubble, in that environment, right? It's hard to see those things when you're in it. Yeah. Because that's, you know, all I saw was, or all I felt was just stress. All I felt was never being enough never being good enough and not knowing why. So then I would really try and, you know, it was just this awful process. And then once I finally was like, listen, enough is enough. And you know, what changed for me is I actually went to talk to somebody and this woman, it was like a life coach. And I was, you know, crying. I was crying all the time, cry to my husband. And I didn't tell anybody else because I never wanted to hurt the reputation of the team or the program or anything like that. I mean, cause it's not about really the adults, even though it's so silly, we made it about ourselves. It's about the team. It's about the girls and their experience. Um, and so I finally went to talk to somebody cause I thought, man, my husband needs a break. <laughs> and um, what she said to me, she goes, okay. She goes, you know what, if you, you know, somebody you loved, if your husband was in the same position, what would you have him do? And he said, well, I'd have him quit. <laughs> he doesn't deserve that. So I think a lot of times it's so much easier for us to, to dole out advice. Yeah. And it's so much easier to be like, get out of that relationship. You don't deserve that. You are, you know, you are amazing. You're beautiful. You're wonderful. And then when it comes to ourselves, we just, we don't see ourselves like that. And yeah. so we stay in situations that are emotionally, mentally, and end up being physically detrimental to our health and you know stress overall is like it's the number one thing that I think no matter what we're going through that we have to be aware of and we have to adjust yeah. constantly um and so <laughs> it, it finally took somebody saying well if this was happening to somebody that you love what would you have them do and then I was like well why did it take so long for me to stand up for myself um and so once I quit that job I I knew something was going on. I knew something was going on in my body. Um, I just didn't feel like myself. I was very emotionally up and down. I'm an emotional person, but I was pretty up and down. I was very high of highs, low of lows. Um, I found a, I finally found, um, I went to a bunch of doctors that uh, an endocrinologist told me that I had um, Hashimoto's thyroiditis and hypothyroidism, which is, I know, right? And um, I said, well, what is that? And she said, your auto, your immune system is attacking your thyroid. Your immune system thinks that your thyroid is like an invader. So it's just, you know, attacking it. I'm like, okay, so what do we do about it? And she said, nothing, there's nothing we can do. You just basically wait till your body attacks your thyroid until it doesn't work. And then we start supplementing with hormones. And then I'm like, okay, well, my hair is falling out. I'm gaining weight. I don't feel like myself. I feel really off and there's nothing that we can do. And was no, there was nothing, there was no lifestyle. There was no diet. There was nothing else I could do. Okay. And so I took that for what it was. I went to see a, um, I mean, I was Googling everything, right. Or Pinteresting everything at that some point. I mean, and so I saw that if you go to a dermatologist, they can help with hair loss. So I went to the dermatologist um, and she told me I was prematurely balding at 33 years old. And so it was all of these things that I kept running up against and thank goodness my intuition or my stubbornness or whatever, but it was just like, that doesn't seem right. Mm -hmm. That just doesn't seem right. You know, being a, I took care of my body. I was a professional athlete for a long time. I was like, surely this can like, I'm not like aging quickly or my body's not all of a sudden breaking down. Um, so two years of kind of those types of answers. And I finally had my rock bottom moment where we had some people over um, and we were doing the hosting thing. And 
I got really, really sick for, for no, I didn't understand why I got really sick and I, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. As soon as that door shut and everybody left on the Sunday or whatever, I started bawling. I looked at my husband and I said, I don't recognize myself. I, I literally don't recognize myself and what now I know is a lot of inflammation in my face, but I said, I just don't feel like myself. And I'm like, there's no way I can, this cannot be what it's, what it's like, like forever. I, I, this cannot be it. So that day I kind of started my own journey. Um, I found a naturopath that has been the most supportive person in like healing who has experience with Hashimoto's, who has experience with autoimmune, who has experience with thyroid disorders. Um, and when I went to her, everything was so escalated. And I think the, the stress that I'd accumulated throughout my life, but I think really in that time period where I was just, you know, the three-year time period, I think I'm probably always going to have thyroid issues or maybe always, oh, obviously I'm going to have autoimmune issues. I was born with an autoimmune issue. And then this is my second. Um, but I think the stress of that just totally escalated my experience. Um, and so it's taken me three years of work um, to really, you know, two years really to start feeling like myself again. And three years in now I'm like, you know what? I don't want anybody else. I don't want any other woman to go through the experience I went through. I don't want any other woman to go to their doctor and say, yeah, my, my test may look normal, but I don't feel good. I don't feel like myself. Right. And the whole thing of like, well, if you've gained weight, you know, just eat less and work out more. That advice is over. Because a lot of times we are under eating, which is chronic stress. We are over, overly working out, which is chronic stress. And then if you are any adult, we have chronic stress. If you're a mother, if you're, you know, and it's all of this stress is compiling and we don't have a lot of empathy and I think support in like our current medical system, at mm -hmm. least over here, my experience when it comes to things that, that take a little bit more digging. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I kind of took my, my healing into my own hands. I decided to not stop until I found somebody that was going to help me. Um, how did you find, then, how did you find the naturopath and, and how, how did she, what did she advise? And you know, what, how did it, yeah. how did it start? I mean, were, were you always interested in holistic stuff as opposed to the traditional stuff anyway? I've always been pretty open. Yeah. pretty open. Um, I just, I, you know, I love learning about anything, health, anything, even, even prior to all of this stuff. Like I probably, you know, if I would have known now what I knew then in college, I probably would have gone that, that route. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was really open to it. I mean, honestly, I think I was so desperate. <laughs> I just wanted somebody to help me. Um, and it was one of those things that I uh, was, was talking about it at my work after that situation. Um, and, uh, I, I got a referral to somebody and I, I took a chance on her because I, you know, trusted the woman that I was getting the referral from. And then when I, you know, got my, my numbers tested and everything, she was like, okay, you know, we've got some work to do. So, and I know that, you know, insurance wise and stuff, it may not always be like this for people. So, you know, we want to, you know, I want to make sure to acknowledge that you can, you advocate within your means. Um, because sometimes the holistic field sometimes doesn't take insurance. And so I, I'm aware of that. This one, mine does, thank goodness. But, um, we, we, I got my blood work tested every six weeks and we met every six weeks because I was, I was just in a lot of, I was just down the road. I had a long way to go. And so it was constantly test, evaluate, test, evaluate, test, evaluate. Um, you know, blood work is just such a beautiful thing because we can get a better picture. Um, and I, you know, want to note here that if anybody is dealing with any thyroid issues, your doctor needs to be testing beyond your TSH. That's a baseline. That's a minimum and asking for, um, a full thyroid panel it's a basic testing. 
So if anybody is saying that they can't provide that, they won't provide that, um, I would advocate to, you know, look for a different doctor, a different opinion, because those are very basic testing. And sometimes doctors don't really feel like it's um, worth it to run the antibody test, because even if you have an autoimmune um, disorder that's relating to the thyroid, there's not much we can do about it anyway. So we, and, and I don't think that at all. I think we need to know what we're dealing with. We need to know if there's some sort of autoimmune response going on because autoimmune can be so dang tricky. Um, so anyway, so just, just a little few things to, to watch out for as well. Cool. So, so what your journey, has it been about um, food and diet? Has it been about vitamins and supplements? You said you're getting tested every six weeks. What was the mm -hmm. change in those six weeks in terms of what you were doing? Mm -hmm. Well, I, and, and medication is not for everybody. I was pretty far gone that I did have, I, I do take medication to support um, my thyroid. Um, and, but I think that, that we think that having, you know, any sort of medication for whatever, that's, that's it. That's the answer. When, you know, even for anybody that doesn't have anything going on, um, we looked first and foremost at stress management. We looked, you know, at, um, you know, a lot of times if we are under eating, especially women for a long time, if we are chronic dieting for a long time, you know, nutrient deficiencies can, can cause a lot of gut issues. We can cause some autoimmune response. So how do we start to nourish your body where your body feels safe? You know, I think a lot of women come to me for weight loss. Well, if you have autoimmune or thyroid conditions, specifically like hypothyroidism, it, it regulates our metabolism. So weight loss can be extra difficult. Like it's already not difficult enough can be more difficult. Um, but if we are not able to nourish our body, our bodies will never feel safe to release that weight. Because if we're just constantly holding on, you know, our bodies are constantly holding on to what it has because it's not sure when it's going to get fuel again, it's not, you know, there's no consistency in when we're, um, basically going to fuel our, our ourselves. Right. And so we just have to be very, very aware of, of what stress looks like. Right. And a lot of that can look like under eating. Um, so just really learning how to nourish my body, um, rest, you know, we have this, like you were saying, um, when we slow down and we're still feeling the, you know, like kind of, energy of, of still being like, man, I'm having a hard time getting going, but we have to rest. And I think we got to do some work around really resting and not sitting there zoning out, thinking about all the things we should be doing. You know, we're not really resting, right. We're just sitting there and <laughs> having the mental games run through our heads of the shoulds and coulds and woulds, and then we get down on ourselves. So resting sleeping properly, moving our body in a, in a really supportive way. Now that's probably not going to look like a lot of high intensity interval workouts or sprinting or CrossFit or anything. And not that I love all of those things. It's just that we have to reduce the stress, the overall stress on our body and our bodies love restorative movement. Our bodies love walking. We could, I mean, walking and yoga, um, Pilates, just stretching, you know, we don't do enough of that stuff. A lot of times we just want to get it in, go to the gym for 30 minutes, you know, bust our ass and get out and go back home and sit on the couch. Well, it's not, it's not about that, right? It's about moving our body in a very, I don't know, nourishing way throughout the day. So it's just like kind of looking at weight loss differently. You know, for me, I, yeah, I probably could have stood to lose some weight, but I'd rather have energy. I want to chase energy. So how do we do that? You know, so how do we, how do we get you to feel like you again? That was what was, what <laughs> was more, most important to me. Um, yeah. and so that's the way I coach, right? A lot of women want, want it, their energy back. They want to feel like themselves again. They want to have, you know, more confidence. They want to, feel good in their skin. They want to run around with their kids. They want to age with grace, age with strength, you know, all of these things. And I think we just have to, and what I want to do is try to just reframe 
what health looks like, especially for women, because we're just bombarded with the marketing of, of how to look, of how to, how to look that way by this fad diet, by that fad diet, by, you know, putting the belt around your stomach and vibrating, you know, your stomach until you get a six pack, all of these things that are just, they're ludicrous, but we've all grown up with that. We've all grown up with the, you know, societal pressure to look a certain way, to age a certain way. Um, and then, you know, that kind of butts up with our confidence in general, but then on top of that, if you're going through anything, you know, with your health, it's, it's, it's even more overwhelming. So I think it's really just like, let's get back to basics and then let's slowly build from there. You know, and I talk a lot about just, it's not perfection, it's consistency. It's taking really small steps over and over and over again until you start to build some momentum. When you start to build some momentum, you start to get gain a little confidence and you're like, okay, okay. I did that for, you know, 30 days. What else can I do? So it's just little, little steps because, you know, we want it to be sustainable. It's not, it's not, you know, a 30 day program. It's not a 90 day program. And then what? This is like our life. So I think it's just getting back to basics. And for me, it was just reframing what I, what I knew about health and my health and women's health. That makes sense. Yeah, it does. So, so what does, if somebody wanted to work with you, um, Mm -hmm. what does that look like? You know, you you said it's not about a 30 day program or whatever, but what Mm -hmm. is it, what is it you're teaching? What is the the woman expected to do or supposed to do? Yeah. So, um, you know, I think just, you know, I want it to, I want to make anyone I'm working with one-on-one, it's going to be an individualized approach because we're all so individual, right? There's not a one size fits all. Um, and I think that is another issue where a lot of times we get in that comparison mode. We're like, well, it worked for her. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the exact same thing. It's not working for me. It must be me. Yeah. And so we get, we immediately get so down on ourselves. We're so hard on ourselves. So really taking kind of an individualized approach, um, through my certification, um, I send out some initial paperwork and we can like get down. It's a, like a body symptom questionnaire. It's like over 300 questions and we can really get down to where your symptoms are kind of falling. So are they falling more in, you know, kind of, we need to focus on gut health. Is it thyroid health? Is it your adrenals? So then we can have kind of a more, um, solidified direction on what to kind of attack first. Um, and so the biggest things I work with my clients with initially is going to be stress management. It's going to be blood sugar regulation. Um, because our, our blood sugar regulation, if we can get that more stable, it's just so supportive to our overall, our, every other way, our body feels the way our body looks. It's really supportive to our adrenals. We really need to be supporting our body. How can we support our body through food, through movement, through through stress, through sleep? Um, you know, we really look at what movement is appropriate for you right now. And obviously this is all going to be around the woman's goals. How is she feeling now? How does she want to feel? You know, what is she, what is she aiming to do? Like, is it just feel better in her clothes again? Is it to, you know, play with her grandchildren again? Is it to, um, you know, I don't need you know, do something physical, like, you know, run a half marathon again, you know, cause those, those things I think can happen. It just takes a lot, a lot of time and healing. If, if, you know, if you were in kind of a similar place that I was, so really it's just, I work with women to, not only just to provide a plan, but I think the biggest thing is really just providing accountability, providing consistency, um, providing empathy and being like, you know what? I hear you, you feel like shit. Yeah. So what, what can we do 
you know, to start taking steps forward to supporting your body. So you don't feel like that anymore. And then we start making tweaks. And if that doesn't work, okay, great. We'll make a tweak. And that's, you know, I think really looking at our health is just like, it can be a trial and error. We can try different things. And if that starts working, okay, we have, uh, you know, we have another direction. If it doesn't, we start tweaking. And I think even if you're not working with anybody, just looking at your health like that is like, as long as you're trying different things to improve your health, that, that's all we can do, right? We can try different tools, see what works, see what doesn't. And I think a lot of times we get so, we get so frustrated with things that are not working on our timeline that we quit. And that's where we, we, we cannot quit on ourselves. We, we cannot quit on our health. Um, and we just tend to do better with extra accountability. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, accountability is something that I, I always shied away from, you know, in lots of ways because it was just like, oh, no, because because then if I don't do it, um, you know, I'm going to feel like shit and I'm going to let the other person down and all the rest of it. And I sort of got over that about three years ago, four years ago in, in another thing that I was involved with and having that accountability um, was crucial, absolutely crucial. Mm -hmm. Um, because it's so easy to just to get lost in your own stuff isn't it and then yeah make excuses and then oh it's been three weeks now so there's no point in me doing anything else now right but, yeah exactly we just have so much of that internal talk and a lot of it is negative yeah um and I think you know one of the biggest things is knowing this about myself as well is like I will show up for you all day why don't I show up for me yeah. And I think that's just a good question to ask ourselves. It's not, it's not a negative thing. It's just, it's just being curious. You know, why, why am I, why would I be so much more upset to let you down? But I am not as upset to let myself down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's you know, nice. and just, yeah, keeping promises to ourselves. So I think too, just kind of evaluating that too. And, and just because you need accountability that that's not a weakness. That's just knowing who you are. Mm. I need accountability because I love people, you know, recovering like people pleasers. So I got to be careful with it, but I want to set myself up for success. So if I know you are holding me to it as well, um, it helps me keep promises to myself. Right. So I can be growing in both areas, but I think it is something that, you know, we, we need to ask ourselves more. And just what's it actually called what you what you do it's called a nutritional therapy practitioner ntp and is that a thing or is that just your thing nope it's um it's a 10 month uh certified uh, program course i just finished in november um yeah it's it's amazing so it's basically just looking at your your health um in a more holistic way so how do we address it with, you know, through foods, uh, through movement, through sleep, through stress management and through, um, supplement support. Um, and so I think I'm like a good, like teammate in that if you are working with a naturopath, you know, and you're seeing your naturopath every, or your doctor, whoever, um, you know, every four to six months, you know, I'm a good support system to come in to make sure, you know, we are working on those things, you know, in the meantime, because, we are, we don't usually get to see our doctors as much as we, you know, hopefully like if you have good support first, that's first and foremost, find somebody that, you know, listens to you. It's going to support you. It's going to dig for you. Um, but I'm here in the meantime for the, the, for not the fun times, right? Because consistency is not sexy. No. Uh, drinking more water is not sexy. Um, making sure to move your body every day, going on a walk. It's not sexy. We don't want to do these things every day, but it's nice to have somebody to keep you accountable, you know, for the, for the not so sexy things. And that's really what healing and growth is. It's, it's not that sexy, even though a lot of times, you know, the wellness world is making it out to be. Um, so that's what I'm there for. I'm more of a support in conjunction with your, um, your medical team, whoever that is for you. Okay. So if, if there's any women listening that are resonating with some of what you said mm -hmm. or all of what you said, what would you suggest um, they do? I mean, obviously, 
you know, where can they contact you? Where can they find out more yeah. about you? But, um, yep. but what, what would you say would be like, if, I'm just thinking, putting myself in that position yeah. and I'm thinking, well, yeah, I feel knackered and I probably am stressed. Um, I don't particularly have a thyroid issue, not that I'm aware mm. of anyway. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I kind of like the sound of this. So sort of what, you know, how, Where would, do it, I start? how would it start? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so even if you, even if you, you, I mean, obviously thyroid or not, I would suggest that at least once a year get, you know, full metabolic thyroid panel tested. And I would get hormones tested once a year for women. Um, just because as we age, it's good to kind of know where we're at. And a lot of us have some, some hormone imbalances, um, just, just the way of the world. So I would suggest doing that, finding somebody that can, can support you. Um, and I hope that whoever it is, your primary, just make sure you have somebody that is really supporting that and supporting you along the way. Um, I think really where to start nutrition wise, I would focus on eating whole foods as much as you possibly can. And by whole foods, I mean, a potato is a potato. There's nothing else in it. Right. So get away from the processed foods as much as you can, because our bodies recognize whole foods. So it's not only able to pull nutrients from those foods, it's able to break down those foods. You know, we want to, we want our body to be like a well-oiled machine. So we need to give it fuel that it understands. So a lot of times if we're looking at processed foods and you can't, you know, read, or you can't, um, like pronunciate the ingredients, your body can't understand the ingredients either. That's a good way to think about it. Mm -hmm. Um, if you do have processed stuff, you want, you know, as few of ingredients, you want to understand the ingredients. So really getting back to basics, whole food diet. Um, most women are de deficient in protein. So we really want, a, I coach a protein forward, um, kind of approach. So making sure you're getting enough protein in your diet is key. It's absolute key. Um, so I'd focus there and then, um, hydration. We want to make sure you are hydrated. Water is so important, but also making sure you get, um, some extra goodness, adding some electrolytes to your water, um, element L M N T are the absolute best. They're so good, but there's other ones. Um, you can also add a dash of sea salt to your water. You don't want to taste it, but that sea salt provides minerals that are able to like help our, help the water kind of get into our body, get into our cells. So it's not just like going right through us. Um, and then really I would focus on consistent sleep seven to nine hours. If you are, if you are tired, your body's it's telling you something. If you are exhausted, your body's telling you something. And I think a lot of times, you know, we look at our symptoms of hair loss, which is the worst weight gain, um, chronic fatigue, which is what I had at the time, but I just thought I was overly tired. Those are ways of your body communicating with you. It's nothing that you're doing. It's nothing that like, you're not doing anything wrong necessarily. Your body is just saying, Hey, we need to change some things up. We need to get some support. So really listen to your body. If you're tired, rest, don't push it. If you, if you haven't slept, if you are a mama and you're not sleeping, rest is more important than going and doing the, the bike workout because you're already in a, a deficit of, of sleep. You're going to be in more of a, a stress state. So really listen to your body. If you guys are tired, sleep. If you want to just hang out on the couch, hang out on the couch and enjoy it right? Don't feel guilty over it. Enjoy it. Give your body, your body's trying to tell you something, give it what it, what it needs. So I would really just get back to basics. Um, try to sleep seven to nine hours a night consistently as much as you can mamas. That's going to look different, obviously. Um, and just, just listen to your body, just listen to it. It, it, it our bodies are working with us. Even, even though sometimes it feels like it's not, mm -hmm. it's just trying to communicate with us. So yeah. Yep. Um, stress, whole foods, focus on protein, rest and sleep. Excellent. Yeah. I'm hearing that more and more, you know, in terms of 
these podcasts I've been doing as well, you know, the stress that manifests into all sorts of weird and wonderful things. Mm. And, you know, we know stress is a killer. We know stress is a problem, but our life really has forced a lot of people into that situation. Mm. You know, it's just the way the lot that, you know, the world has evolved and you do feel selfish or lazy or whatever if you're just going to sit down on the couch and not do those things you were supposed to be doing mm-hmm. um and and it's a perpetual cycle and, and you never get out of it and it's crazy yeah. yeah we can't get away from it a lot of times so we have yeah. to figure out how to how to pick our battles you know what are our priorities and then what are some tools that we can start to implement to to at least give it a run for its money. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Amy, thank you so much. It's been fascinating uh, listening to your story. And also, um, you know, the, the way that you're concentrating on your health and, and other people's health. Um, so if people do, you know, if there's any women listening that mm-hmm. would love to know more about you and how can they do that? Yeah, um, my Instagram is the best way. Um, it is at the thyroid pack. And so PAC stands for purpose, accountability, consistency, and knowledge. Um, that's the best way for now. Um, um, I'm going to be dropping my own, um, podcast in the next few weeks, um, called the chronic athlete. Um, so that will be up and going probably in a week or so. Um, and so, yeah, if you'd like to hear more, you know, um, just like you're doing, you know, I just want to provide proof through storytelling of, you know, inspiration, resilience, and, and all things wellness, because you never know whose story someone can relate to. Um, and that may be just the step that they need to, to take action in their own life. So. Totally agree. Totally agree. Oh, that, that's interesting. I'll let, I'll look out for that. Um, and I always finish these interviews with, um, is there anything you feel call to say to just to leave the listeners with any pearls of wisdom or anything that that feels relevant for right now um yeah well I you know I appreciate you so much um and I I have such a passion for for helping women um and I think you know as we were discussing um just this time of year with all of the the starts um all of the new year new you you know we do not have to shed who we are. We just have to evolve who we are. You know, a lot of times, and I'm guilty of this too, of like, we get sucked into all of these before and afters. And a lot of times we want our own before and after, right? Our own before and after picture. And we see these pictures sometimes and we're like, I'll never go back here. I'll never. And we, we have to just remember that that before picture, that woman was the woman that made the choice to start. Mm. Right. So we never want to say anything down on that woman. She is still you. And if you are in your before moment, you just need to start. And it does not have to be overwhelming. It does, you do not have to climb the mountain today. You just have to find something that's sustainable to get you to your after, which actually never comes. (laughs) It never comes. So I just want, you know, to be encouraging of this time. I'm all about the, the, the goals. I'm all about taking action in your your life, but just remember that the before that you all are craving, (laughs) she had to start somewhere. Yeah. Love it. Be proud of that woman. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, well, thank you again, Amy. Um, you've been inspirational and, um, yeah, I've just got this vision of you playing basketball all over the world and like in a whole world that I didn't even know existed. So yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> of course. And, um, yeah, thank you. And I know the listeners will have loved this. And uh, thank you so much for your time. Of course. Thank you so much. Take care.